Along with their recent 5090 announcement, we saw partner cards like this at CES. And this. And this. And wait for it. This. But then there's NVIDIA's own this. Only two slots. They're calling this thing SFF ready. But is it really, is it really SFF friendly? Welcome to Machines and More. So here we are, 50 series on the horizon. So I just want to do a quick summary related to the 50 series Founders Edition coolers. You know, some of you have had questions on this. Feedback I've been hearing is, dang, you know, those cards are, are big. Those partner cards, they kind of have to be right. Rightfully at the top end with 575 watts total board power for the 5090. But another thing I'm hearing is a lot of SFF builders are interested in the FE cards because they're, they happen to be thinner and therefore dimensionally more compatible with small form factor cases. So yes, based on NVIDIA's SFF Ready guidelines, these cards qualify as bona fide SFF Ready enthusiast cards, but other than being at least a 70 level card, that qualification is a dimensional one and not a functional one. And at two slots thick, you might be tempted to go for one of these. So I'll share some thoughts on the cooling design specifically. Uh, we'll use some of our favorite SFF cases or common SFF cases to illustrate that. And uh, I'm not saying don't, but uh, you, there's some things that you may want to watch out for. So first off, how does the new FE cooler work? Why can NVIDIA get away making a little heat sink while others have to make these behemoth cards, right? So I'd love to have a special guest explain this, but I'm still working on that front. So, hey, let's just go back to the CES floor and I'll do my best to explain how this guy works. What I want to show you is the new 5090 FE, and it's also going to be the same, similar cooler design for the 5080 FE and 5070 FE. Um, it's going to raise a couple of concerns for SF cases in certain scenarios, and actually a lot of scenarios. Uh, so let's take a look at how it works, and then I'll kind of illustrate through uh, what the problems might be. The way this works is that it's got two intake fans uh, at the bottom of the car. If you think about it from a traditional build, and then that will exhaust out the top, the back plate side of the card on both ends. And that's one big change with the 50 series Founders Edition designs. And there'll be a minimal amount of exhaust coming out the power connector side, because that middle section does have ventilation and a little airflow through that part, but it won't be significant. Both hands are going to exhaust through the heatsink where a back plate would traditionally go. And that design means that a lot of airflow will happen a lot more than your typical graphics card heatsink, which primarily vents out the sides of the heatsink and a lot more than NVIDIA's FE cards for the last two generations. So this is an absolutely beautiful card, amazing design, but this actually introduces a few problems for SFF builders. So to understand, let me first show you how the old cooler works. So this here is the cooler for a 3070 FE. The IO side fan was a blower design. So that's this side here. And this is the part that's typically covered by the PCB. Uh, so it is self-contained. The heat from this section can only exhaust out the back. So it'll exit uh, through this end. And even though that's not quite as effective for cooling the card itself, it's actually quite good for minimizing the effect on your case thermals. And if you could imagine in a small form factor case, this design, a fully uh, self-contained blower card can have very minimal impact on the rest of the case. Because this isn't as good for cooling the card, NVIDIA balanced this blower section by improving the card thermals with this flow-through section on the end of the card. And this is completely, uh, it's well, transparent. As you can see, right, the fan is on this side here, okay. And this fan is going to blow through this heatsink. With this side, the exhaust is going to come up and flow through the graphics card. And that's typically going to be towards the location of your CPU socket. And if you had a tower cooler right here, it's going to go towards it. This is a 4070 FE, and I wanted to use a two slot card here so you could somewhat visualize the 50 series. So imagine for a moment uh, that this card has, if it had two flow through sections, so both sides pushing hot air up. Inside this NCASE M2 with uh, the air cooler here, 
you might be able to visualize the first problem in what is a pretty common SFF setup, the tower cooler. Air-cooled NR200, you're also gonna have this type of setup here. So you're gonna have all this hot exhaust coming up at the cooler. And whether you run this as a rear intake, so you're moving this way, or rear exhaust, you're moving this way, won't matter because uh, one, the exhaust from this side coming at the cooler is gonna heat up the heat sink. And with exhaust coming from both ends of the car, you really can't avoid it just by changing your airflow direction. Now for 30 series or 40 series FE coolers, I would have always run this setup as a rear intake because you can avoid that single flow through section just by pushing air this way. And you don't have to worry too much about this side, that blower, you know, that gets outside of the case. And then, you know, this is gonna push the air towards the top exhaust. So this is actually okay. So yeah, that's the first concern. So then in this type of traditional layout, you might say, hey, I'll just switch to an intaking side mounted rad, right? But now you're gonna have two problems. So 50 series, uh, FE 5080 and 5090 will be 137 millimeters, right? So there's gonna be a significant overlap between the side mounted radiator and uh, your card. So the card exhaust will heat up your rad. Okay, it's really close and this is gonna be uh, overlapping. Remember, it's coming straight at it now. And two, the card's airflow is gonna be blocked off. You also have fans in addition to the radiator's thickness. So it's not gonna cool itself as well. So kind of tricky with the 50 series FE in traditional layout cases with air cooling or side mounted AIO. So your partner cars are gonna exhaust towards the two side panels of the case in this scenario, and that's a lot more manageable. And that's why I kind of would recommend going AIB for this generation. Um, next, how about this guy? This is a pretty common case, the Fractal Terra exemplary sandwich style case, very popular. The power supply that is behind the 30 series and 40 series flow through sections can be shifted out. And that's what I've done here to give extra airflow room. And when you're uh, in conjunction with a bottom exhaust like I have here can actually work quite well. Um, what helps a ton is that the blower section over here removes a lot of the heat outside the case. So now imagine that this end of the card is no longer the blower section now. It's going to be the flow through in the 50 series, right? And looky looky, right? No room here. It's completely choked off. That's terrible for the card cooling. And I'd also be very concerned about the impact on the riser cable, which is touching the card, uh, the motherboard itself. This is a dead zone for airflow, right? No, no real ventilation out the back here. And that's not good for the longevity of your components or your car cooling. Now, in some cases, not this one, uh, but say Lee and Lee's A4H2, you can actually shift out the riser cable and you can move a two slot card out to that three slot position. And there, the card may work a little bit better with 20 millimeters of space and you'll want to vent that unused slot at the back better if you have case fans close by. So a case like T1V2, where you can air cool the CPU and run top case fans, that may be serviceable. 1590 still may be tricky because 575 watts is unprecedented uh, for a case uh, of this nature. And then for partner cards, that exhaust, it's going to be forced towards the top and the bottom of the case. So the spine of the case, that motherboard, this stuff is not gonna inhibit it as much. So there's gonna be a lot of scenarios that are unfavorable for running the new FE cooler. And where this card will really have no issues in your typical mid-tower case, right? An AIO set up with front intaking rad and everything just being pushed towards the back. There's no minimal impact on each other. Um, unfortunately, that type of setup, it just isn't something you see in SFF layouts right now. However, it's not all doom and gloom. I can foresee that there's actually one particular SFF setup that could work okay for both CPU and GPU cooling. And this is where you have to fight flow through with flow through. In uh, vertical GPU configuration in a traditional case, uh, a la NR200P Max, NR200P V2, or you know, even end case M1 Evo and M2, you can run a top radiator as an intake and exhaust fans at the bottom with adequately sized case feet. So you have that you know, vertical airflow while using a vented side panel 
this is the scenario. And you can also do this with the regular NR200P, but there you'll need a bottom mounted radiator with uh, top exhaust. Still, that's kind of the vertical uh, configuration there. So your top intake radiator will be more agnostic to the 50 series FE cards exhaust pattern because that's going towards the middle of the case. And then by exhausting out the bottom, you'll flush both the CPU and GPU heat from the system. And the vertical flow th through airflow configuration for your case means that both your CPU and GPU can work reasonably well. Versus the M2, I would actually lean towards the wider NR200P Max or the V2 because you should be able to run two top and two bottom fans there. You have an increased distance to the motherboard and more space away from the radiator, thereby you avoid too much heating up at the motherboard. And if you really want to make it work even better, I would get a 20 millimeter longer riser cable than the stock one since the 50 series FE cards are only two slots thick. So with that longer riser cable, you can hang the cart on the outermost slot where you'll be closest to the side panel for optimal intake and you give even more room to dissipate the heat where it will be exhausted by your case fans at the bottom. Uh, with the NK SIM2, I actually wanna say the riser cable is long enough that you can already optimize for it. So there, you know, you, you may just wanna try if you already have that set up. So at this point, this is my educated guess and I'll be happy to eat my words if the 5080 FE or 5090 FE ends up driving well in those problematic SFF scenarios I highlighted, but I really don't think so. Just look how close the card is to the spine on the Terra. But yeah, if you are going for 5090, 575 watts is no joke either way. So you really, you really have to test this out. So uh, we'll check back in on this topic later on. Hopefully I can get uh, one of those FE cards to test. I am also curious what you guys think. So please chime in below. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like, go ahead and subscribe. Big thanks for watching.